So today I want to show you guys how to make a really cool glass layer effect that looks something like this. And you're going to know how to do it so well, you're going to probably make your own stuff in the future. And you know, I'm just saying I have a lot of super dope layer styles. So if you're into them, if you don't even know you can even do stuff like this, basically 3D rendering on the go. You know what I'm about to say. Don't forget to check out my Everything Pack design bundle that has over 32 plus products, 600 plus assets, and all of my future design packs that ever come out for free delivered straight to you. I just love creating and giving the most value possible because I would never spend money on something I hate. And I know you're going to love it. But let's go ahead and get this thing started. Okay, so we're inside Photoshop. The first thing I want to say is this, of course, works with text or either like any vector shape that you want to do, no matter what you do, though. Make sure you take your actual text layer or whatever layer, change your fill from 100% to zero before you start. Otherwise, at the end of the video, you're going to be questioning your existence, and that is why, okay? 100% to zero, and then you start. So double click and open up your layer styles, and we're going to start off with our bevel and emboss. So for the bevel and emboss, we're going to choose our style and choose inner bevel, smooth, our depth, we're going to max this baby out. The direction, we're going to leave it on up, and our size, we're going to leave it at 60 pixels. Then for our angle, we're going to go at 120, 85. And the gloss contour here, I'm using the fifth default one. So there's one, two, three, four, five. The fifth default is called Cove Shallow. So make sure you guys click on the Cove Shallow default. Of course, I have a lot more contours than you, and I'll, I'll show you why, because you're going to make your first custom one here today if you don't have one. But Cove Shallow will be good to go. And then once you have that, we're going to change our blend mode over here from normal to color dodge. Please don't choose color burn, color dodge. There is a difference. And then for our color, we're gonna go from red to a nice little gray tone over here. I'm gonna say like 97, 97 is pretty nice. Press okay. And of course, for our opacity, we're gonna put this at 90%. And this is actually gonna be the first step of the bevel animals because we have one other thing to do, which is going to contour. Default for you is gonna look like this, right? So you turn on contour, you're gonna be like, that looks bad. So click over here, the one right below it, I believe for you, again, if this is, this might be like not exactly the right one. So I'm gonna count seven, the seventh default one, the half cove will give you this nice effect and give you that kind of like, like a rounded glass pane thing, okay? Now, the next effect we're gonna end up adding is the stroke. Now for this, this is super simple. We're gonna change our size to one inner, normal, 100% opacity and white, basically almost all default besides the actual size being at one or two, two or below. All this is doing for us right here is if you look at this corner with our bevel and end boss, it's not really connecting our serifs or any of our cuts. So it makes the font look really weird. So that one stroke will help you guys out to kind of connect those lines, people's brains and uh, simple. So next up, we're gonna end up adding a sequence of five different layer styles, or excuse me, five different inner shadows. So if you miss any of them, good luck. This is not gonna look the same. But for the first one, we're gonna choose this one, and we're gonna change our blend mode and go from dissolve. Don't know why it's on dissolve, but color dodge, okay? Once you've done this, again, this is the only place you choose your color. For me personally, for the glass effect, I like to choose a nice darker tone. I believe for the thumbnail, I chose like a nice little, like a navy-ish blue, so like 1C, 4, 8, 5D. You can always go back and change this, but this is gonna be my color for me. And then for the opacity, we're gonna put this at 80%, excuse me, 90%. Angle, we're gonna choose negative 60. And then for the distance, choke, and size, we're gonna do 25, 30, and 30. And then for this contour grid, I have a custom one on, but all you have to do is just click on the double ring or the ring double. Once you've done that, you're pretty much good to go. Again, you're not gonna see a little bit of a difference here until you add your next layer style. So on that one, it's gonna be another inner shadow, right? So you're gonna click this little plus button. But the orientation of the layer styles like components and the way you build them does matter. So again, if I, of course, make a duplicate of this inner shadow, I click on that one and I'm gonna click on the bottom one. And it's always gonna be the one on the bottom that we're gonna add a new settings to because otherwise it's not gonna look the same. That is why you can kind of move your layer style up and down, right? Is because it does matter the orientation, okay? However, for this, we're gonna choose our blend mode and we're gonna use a nice little lighten. And then for our color, we're gonna choose a nice offset white. So not too far white, but a nice offset white like so. Looks pretty good. Opacity, we can go at 100%, simple. For the angle, we're gonna choose 90. And already you can kind of start seeing like, just look at that. I mean, for our distance choke and size, we're gonna do 7, 50, and then 15. And then for the contour, will be your first ever custom contour. And really all we're gonna do here is do a nice little big peak little peak okay so we're gonna take this little uh the second peak over here on this ring double right that's the default again so the ring double if you click on it click on the drop down click on ring double you can double click back on this graph and we're gonna take this point drag this down this point drag this down and then this point drag it down to the first like little little graph here press okay and there you guys go that's super super simple and it looks really nice so next inner shadow, we click on this one. This one's gonna be on vivid light. Color, we're gonna choose a nice darker gray, not like, not, not gray gray, but like somewhere right around here, which is pretty good. 
For the angle, we're gonna choose a nice little 130. And for the record, if you're gonna try to turn this on and off, you're gonna notice nothing's changing yet because again, you have to build the layer style out first. So don't tweak out, okay? It'll get there. However, for the settings, we're gonna choose five, zero, and then 15. And then for this console, we're gonna choose the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth one. So this one, again, I think it's called ring. That's the default one that you wanna use for this one and you're good to go. Now we're gonna make another inner shadow duplicate. Click on the one below it again. For this blend mode, we're gonna choose a nice little screen on this one. For the color, we're gonna choose like a sort of like a very offset white, okay? So I'll say like right around like E0, E0, E0 is pretty good. Press OK. And then for the actual angle here, we're gonna go negative 15. And then for the distance choke and size, we're gonna go 6, 0, 15. And for the contour grid, it's gonna say the same exact one. That's that number eight, and you're good to go. Now, for my last inner shot, I'm gonna click on this little plus button one more time, one below it. We're gonna choose the blend mode, lighter color. And for this, we're gonna choose a nice little offset white once again. So I'm gonna just choose DC, DC, DC. I'll have to change this a little bit. I don't even know if there's much of a difference, but offset white, 100% opacity, 120 on the angle, and then 3, 15, 15 for our choke size and distance. And then again, the contour grid will just stay the basic, the eighth one, and you're good to go again. Now to actually make this effect come to life, the last layer so you're gonna put on is gonna be an inner glow. For this blend mode, you're gonna choose hard light, not hard mix, hard light. Your opacity, you're gonna put 80%. And then for the color, this actually will be the only thing I want you to pay attention to when you choose your color for real, for real, okay? And we're gonna scroll down here, we're gonna do a nice gray, right? This is gray, but what I want you to focus on is your corners in here. I have a nice font for this that I actually built it on, on, on accident but it really helped me get that really good feeling. So this gray color, if you look in your inserts here, wherever there's a serif, okay? If I bring this down, this is sort of where you want, right? You see how this gray here, I have 77, 77D. That might be actually good for you. You can just use that color, but if it's a little bit too high, it's gonna be really ugly and distorted. So make sure it's a nice low enough where it gets rid of all that white even in here and somewhere like around here. So I'm gonna actually, gonna, or lucky number sevens, get that nice gray in there and press okay. For the technique, we can leave it on softer. Your edge is good. For your choke in size, we're gonna do 30, 45. And the only contour that I like to use on inner glow right now is the nice little dinosaur one, the rounded steps. Which number is that one? The 11th default one, okay? But once you guys have done that, you've pretty much completed your layer style. Now, just because I do wanna mention this, because I'm starting to notice it for myself as well, I don't have enough of that like frosted glass look. And for that, that's again, it's all about this hard light inner glow like color. If I move this up even a little bit more, you can start to see, look, okay, look at that. You see that little like, like it's more like buffed. But you can see the difference here. Like, like if I go here, right? There's like very much so a lot of black, but if I go just enough up, I get that nice, that's too much. I get this really nice, more beveled look and it really does matter and I want, this one's 9797, so maybe you can use this color, but I just wanna kind of point out and fix with you guys because I think it's gonna help you guys when you build your own, press okay. And then once you kind of feel like you're good to go, press new style. You can call this glass sesso because you love me. Press okay. And then from here, the only thing I want you to just kind of know, okay, I'm gonna press okay for a second. What I wanna say though is go to file new and make like a simple, let's say 2000 by 2000 pixels, uh, new dimension. Now head over to Google and just kind of type in texture tile. Head over to images and kind of just, I want to see even texture glass tile. Let's just say, I don't know. It's going to turn black and white anyway. So copy the layer or copy the image. This is only 800 by 800. So I might lower this document size to a thousand. I'm going to paste in my texture in here, make it the full size. Now I'm going to go to where it says edit, define pattern. And we're just going to call this glass texture. Press okay. Now head back over into your actual layer style where your layer style is, double click back into the layers and go to where it says texture. Now for this, I'm gonna scroll down to my new texture I just put in and you're not gonna see too much difference unless, you know, unless it's a, a different texture than mine, but move your scale first and then your depth as well. So if your depth is too much, right? It's gonna just look wacky and weird, not, no longer glass. I'll say keep it at like 0% and then move it either up like five or down five, okay? Anywhere else is just kind of silly. So I'm gonna say like up two, but then the scale here, I'm gonna move this up as well, right? And really what you get is a nice look. This is not my favorite texture in the world, but again, you can kind of have as much fun as you would like. And it just adds a little bit more flair to the glass, okay? Like for me, I have some pretty cool textures. It's super fun, right? That's That kind of looks like a mosaic universe kind of going on here. So again, super customizable. So if you want to add some texture, if you don't want to, don't, 
this is pretty much it. So really quick, because I know you guys are probably wondering, can you rasterize this layer style? So you actually can, right? So if I just try to rasterize it or, or smart object it, doesn't really matter which one, it's gonna look really weird and like disgusting. So what I want you to do is before you ever smart object or rasterize your layer, just go ahead and put on a nice color overlay, make it pure black at 100% opacity, press okay, press okay again. And then if I go ahead and just smart object it, boom, you no longer get that weird look, but then you say, Sesso, it's no longer transparent. I got you. Double click back on your layer, head over to the blacks on the, uh, what is it, blending options on your blend if, and then take the first layer, hold alt, and then split this until you say like, I don't know, depends on what you kind of like, but I think this right here for me looks pretty good. And there you guys go. You have your rasterized layer that you can now twist and move and whatever, for whatever reason you got that rasterize it, but it's also still transparent, okay? So that's just what I want to show you because you're probably going to run into that issue. But with that, that is the end of the video here today. So hopefully you guys enjoy. And if you guys do like layer styles, let me know because I'll do a lot more. Look at these layer styles. They're coming very soon. These are my specific glass ones. Look at that. Oh my God. Here, I'll take this off first. Oh my God. So all I will say is do not forget, check out the everything pack. The first in the description, you basically get all these assets. It's, it's literally just a playground. And if you're a creative yourself and you enjoy designing, you will enjoy every single asset because it's literally just a building block. It's just creating some really cool professional stuff pretty quick. So with that being said, that is Sesso HQ out. Don't forget to keep smiling, stay positive and stay freaking better guys. Much love. Peace, enjoy your week. And uh, until next time, later.